What is up guys it's the real deal welcome back to the channel guys today we're gonna to be looking at Thea the tomb angel and she's a unique champion she's sort of a hex explosion champion she doesn't explode hexes but if there's hexes out she does more damage just like poison exploders and there's only three champions that can do this who are rule and Cleopatra and Thea so Thea is a champion that everyone can get from doom tower and I'll show you sort of the build that we've gone with, talk about her skills, her masteries, and then we'll test her out in arena and dungeons and just sort of look where she's good in the game. So uh, substats we want to be looking for are speed, crit rate, crit damage, attack percentage, and then maybe accuracy if we don't have someone that can fill that role of throwing out hexes for us. Um, and just want to point out about this gear as well. If you look, We've only got sub speed of a roll of speed on one piece of gear and we're lacking on speed on, on gear with speed so i'm running out of gear guys um so it's really really difficult to you know gear a champion properly but speed is so important you want like sub rolls of speed on every single piece of gear so crit damage gloves attack percentage chest and speed boots ideally these would be attack percentage boots but because we haven't got those precious sub rolls in speed. We've had to go for speed boots. Uh, attack on the ring. With, we want subs in attack percentage to boost up our damage. Crit damage amulet. And ideally with this piece, you'd want um, rolls in accuracy. Just to, you know, uh, the more accuracy you have, the more we can land our debuffs. And, you know, with a banner, either you want lots of rolls in speed or in attack percentage. This is an insane banner. I'm definitely going to be taking this off Thea later, but yeah, it is a very, very, very nice banner. So 30k HP, uh, 5.6k attack. That's very nice. 168 speed. So this is really, really slow. Um, for like PvE content, I'd always aim for like a minimum of 200 speed. And it depends. Like usually you want your um, attack champion, your Nuka, to go last in a team for PvE, usually. Um, usually, you know, all the setup goes first, the drop defense, the weakens, all that stuff. That usually goes first, and then your Nuka steps in. Um, and then for Arena, I, I don't know, some people say 180. I Again, I like to start at 200 and then work my way up. Obviously, we need to be crit capped. Then we've got 263 crit damage, and we're very low on the accuracy at 145. So accuracy is not essential for her. But if you're going to build it for Hydra, I would definitely go for a minimum of 40, 40k HP um, and try and bump this up to 2.5k defense, maybe 3k a push. And then we need some accuracy as well because I probably run Smite on her. So we want to be landing that Smite because Smite will just increase your damage so much for Hydra. And you can only really use her up for Hydra hard. After that, she starts to fall off. But if that's where you're at in the game, it's perfectly fine. She'll fill that role for you. So passive has a 50% chance of placing true fear debuff on all enemies for one turn when an enemy loses 30% or more of their max HP in a single hit. So her A2 absolutely slams. Um, so if she doesn't kill them, it means there's a pretty good chance we're going to land, land true fear on the enemy. Uh, A3, she's got a really nice A3. Places a perfect Veil buff on this champion for three turns. Grants an extra turn. So really, we're only going to have perfect Veil loss for two turns because of that extra turn. And it's on a full turn cooldown, but because of the extra turn, really, it's on a three turn cooldown. A2 attacks all enemies. Damage increases by 50% for each Hex debuff on the enemy team. Stacks up to 300%. So if we're on Spider... There's going to be more than, you know, the spiderlings count as well. So that means we can get up to 300 damage. Uh, waves in general, there's going to be five enemies in front of us. So that means we'll get 250 extra damage. And in Arena, there's going to be four enemies. So that means up to 200% extra damage. So A1 attacks two times at random. Has a 100% chance with Philly Booked of placing Hex debuff for five turns. This debuff cannot be resisted. Each critical hit decreases the cooldown 
for her A3 skill by one turn. So, of course, she's going to... And also, because she's attacking twice, it means that this is probably just going to come off cooldown anyways. And that's great because because you get that extra turn, it means that we can reduce the cooldown on that A2. So we can just start popping off again with that A2. And it does absolutely slam. She does have an attack aura in all battles. It's rare that I ever use this kind of aura, but it's there if you need it. So for blessings, there's a few ways you can go. Personally, I love Soul Reap. It's giving us extra attack. Um, say we don't finish off the enemy, you know, the Grim Reaper is going to step in and do extra damage. We're also going to get crit damage as well. So Soul Reaper is great for clay, uh, sorry, clearing waves. It can be really good for Hydra as well. If your team's hitting hard enough, then, you know, Soul Reap is just going to help you do loads of damage on these heads as well when they're like low on HP. And it's also great for Arena. Oh, and sorry, we, let's go back to the blessings. We hadn't quite finished. Personally, though, if you're using her specifically for Hydra, Brimstone is pretty much the only way to go unless you've got two other champions in the squad that are running Smite. Um, but yeah, so if you've only got one champion with Smite in, it, or, you know, you want, it's fine. Put it on her, it's fine. Uh, it's going to give us more HP as well, so great survivability. We're also getting extra accuracy as well, so it's going to help us land that Smite. And like I said, Smite, it just does so much damage. Um, so if you got if you don't need smite, there's the soul reap. Otherwise, you go for crushing rend as well. So crushing rend is going to bring us um, extra attack as well, also extra crit damage, and it's going to help us do more damage as well. So we get to ignore more defense. So it's a good way to go. So there's is there's flexibility in the way that you build her. So mastery. So I haven't fully done her masteries. Uh, she doesn't really benefit from anything else here on the support tree. Um, I did think Master Hexer, however, um, yeah, I did think Master Hexer, but then she's doing it for five turns anyway, so it doesn't really, really matter that much. Um, Sniper as well, I guess it can, but then again, we're probably going to land it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So if I had to choose one, it'd be Spirit Haste, but personally, I feel like you should try and, you know, don't, don't waste all those minnow runs. So offense tree, I've sort of gone for like a hybrid build. So I've gone for sort of arena and wave clear. Um, but, you know, you could, you could, instead of taking Helm Smasher, you could definitely go for War Master. That's going to help do more damage on the boss. You can also go Flawless Executioner as well. So that's really going to bump up the damage that we do from our A2 as well. So we've gone for obviously crit rate, crit damage. And because mine's built so slow, we had to go for Whirlwind of Death just to bump up her speed so it's not so much of a joke uh, opportunist is great for wave clear and arena um you know if you throw out any stuns or sleeps or fears any form of like cc we're going to be increasing our damage by 12 percent. one of my favorite masteries uh you can also go cycle violence as well obviously she's gonna be doing huge damage and that's gonna again just help us cycle through faster our abilities uh, Heart of Glory, so, you know, we are probably going to have full HP. Again, wave clear bosses is going to help. Uh, singled out, so we're not, you know, um, so if they're a little bit low on HP, it means that, you know, we're going to smack and then bring it down. So the chances are they are probably going to have more HP than us. So that means we're going to do another 6% damage. Of course, she's going to be popping heads. So that means that, um, you know, that's going to increase our damage again for every kill that we get and it stacks up to 12 percent and then yeah like i said i've gone for helm smasher just to get that extra ignore defense so we've looked at the mastery we've looked at the gear oh sorry just to mention obviously we're in savage and crit damage uh savage you know it's a great way for new because it's going to increase our damage but you don't have to go savage you could go like um triple crit damage so that will help bump up your numbers but it's more about trying to reach the stats on her i mean we were low on speed. Maybe we could go perception. Perception will give us speed and accuracy. But yeah, there's there's loads of different ways you can build it. But obviously, savage and crit damage are probably the best way to go. So let's uh, test her out in the arena, and then let's do some dungeon runs as well. All right. So we're pretty high in gold five at the moment, and some of these teams are redonkulous. I'm gonna try and take this one off. We're gonna need a little bit of RNG in our favor to win this one but all we need to do as long as i can get hedgy 
under control and warlord then we should be able to win this fight but it's gonna be a hard one and to be honest well all i really want to do is try and showcase um fear all right so no one's got stone skin perfect that's what i'm talking about that's why i love hedgy you know we've literally locked everyone out of the team and we've managed to get a provoke from his gear set so what we need to do is the best way to play her as well is like we're gonna obviously need turn meter boost we she's gonna be in a go first team um then we're gonna throw out the hexes with mithrala perfect landing on everyone and let's just slow down let's see oh no let's just see what sort of damage we do like i'm hoping it just absolutely slams all right okay and finally and finally thea's gonna get a turn sometime today all right there we go oh my god still all right let's just remove that um slow okay so now it's thea's time to shine let's see what this a2 is doing 163 like 100 that was some insane damage um, we didn't get the kill on Taris. Uh, that's because of petrification. So what happens with petrification is it does the same as freeze and it reduces the damage that the enemy does to you. Um, her A1, that was like sort of 40k. It was a double hitter, 220s. It's not like insane damage, but it's still pretty decent. But this is the sort of problem that you have with the... Uh, she's probably good for sort of like average um, arena. And like she does smack like i was surprised by the numbers but she requires too much setup she like you're gonna have to bring in mithrala if you really want her to shine um yeah i just feel like arena's not her place let's try and find like a harder team and then i'm gonna bring in like my go-to squad just to compare so we're gonna try and go against this team and i've had to bring in uko just because i feel like we needed a stripper for this and we got sheeped and this is more of an, an me issue where that I don't have the gear for Thea to really shine. Um, you know, she's too slow. She's too slow. So if she's a bit faster, it would make things a lot easier. But there we go again with the big slam. But um, I think this is going to be a loss just because obviously Uko's coming with that revive. And we're not going to be able to kill Trunda. I mean, if we do, I'd be very surprised. I will bring in the team that I think or that I would have used to beat this team. And there we go. You know, this is this is really her problem is that she's, she smacks, but she's not bringing much else in. And also she relies on there being a hex champion. Like the stone skin metal completely shuts her out. So let's try a real team and see what happens. Okay, so this is what we're rolling with. This is my sort of bread and butter of a team. And we've got Uko again. So obviously great stripper. That time we didn't land one and got completely locked out. So we are going to use Lures to open. And then, and this is, to be fair, I love running double nuke. For me, it really does just speed things up. Um, drop the rest of the team. And we can survive a hit from, from Trunda. This is, you know, in arena, you don't need just a strong offense. You need a strong defense. And Liores and Hepifrak, sorry, Hepfrak, they both bring that. So, you know, that's all you need. And that was a very, very easy win. And let's just look at the damage. <laughs> nice. Just seriously love these two champions. Two of my favorite, just absolute beasts. So we've sort of seen that, you know, Thea sort of mid-tier for Arena, but let's check her out in dungeons where, to be fair, is where she shines a little bit more. Okay, so she's not going to be great in Spider Normal, but we're going to use our Inspider Hard, and we're only on stage two. Um, I, I don't know if I could build a team for her to get any to do any higher, uh, but I just wanted to sort of show a team that I was using like back in the day. So I'm going to boost her meter with Arb. We've actually got Thea in the lead for that extra attack. I'm going to throw out those hexes. Leo's going to go first. Oh, he's hit a little bit too hard. Okay, throw out the slows. And Thea's going to go next. 
Yeah, she's even slower than my than my renegade. Now that's embarrassing. But I think this this should be pretty a pretty straightforward fight. Gonna boost her meter again with Arb. Double here with Liores. Gonna reset our cooldowns. Heal, boost that turn meter, throw out that increase in attack, <laughs> increase attack, throw out those hexes. Oh man, oh, I, I, there we go. I was like, oh no, we're not going to be able to see the A2 in action. Whoa, 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 we've got that A3. Here we go. Boom. So she can be used for spider hard if you want to go that route. Um, I'm pretty sure you'd be able to use like build a, a stage six team as well. I don't think she's good enough for 10 though. 10, you do need some really good champions for that. So usable in spider hard 10. Let's uh, let's check her in dragon. So I don't think she's good enough to really do hard, but we're going to do stage 25. So yeah, she does definitely fall off hard. She's not going to be good enough to carry for that. So she's sort of more like for me, she's more of a mid tier champion. And we're just going to see what sort of damage she does. So we've got, you know, weaken, we've got decreased defense, and we've got the hex. Let's sort of see what she can do to this wave. Oh, now that was some insane damage. Obviously, I still feel like, you know, Seer, she's a void epic. She's technically easier to get, even though, you know, eventually everyone gets um, Thea from Doom Tower. But Seer, you know, my Seer would wipe that wave way easier um, all she needs is she needs buffs which you know we could just get from lydia and we wouldn't have to be using mithrala so i still feel like she's not an insane champion she's still good like the wave clear and the damage is pretty insane but yeah um so for the, this team as well what i've gone for is you know we've got mithrala we've got chagor and they're basically just in here to throw out poisons to you know just kill the boss as quickly as possible um but yeah i still think she's like a good champion but personally i wouldn't invest in her like on my account i've definitely got way stronger champions um she only takes seven books though but legendary books they're hard to come by you need to try and save you know save them as much as you can if you're like you should only really put books into your absolute best champions especially legendaries i just feel like she doesn't cut the mustard and we'll see what sort of damage she does on the boss like um like i said like her a1 doesn't hit too hard does like 90k it's not terrible but it's not great either um and i just feel like there's just so many champions that are just so much better than her um but again if you really really want to use her and you need her for progression that's perfectly fine so like hydra hard dragon spider even usable in arena even though I would definitely, there's definitely way better options for, for Arena. And she can also be used for Doom Tower to clear waves as well. But again, you do need that setup from Mithrala or some form of setup. Like you need a, she's not the only one, but obviously Mithrala is the absolute goat when it comes to Franat Hexes. So Thea did come out on top, 2.6 mil. I mean, she was absolutely smacking those waves. Um, Chagor, 2.2 mil. But again, he's going to be doing loads of damage on the waves and the boss with his poisons, but more on the boss. Um, and Mithrala did a pretty decent amount of damage again from the poisons on the boss. So, yeah, um, I'm still, I'm not going to say I'm on the fence. I'm more of like a Thea's mid-tier and she's only like a progression champion if you really, really need her. Otherwise, you know, I don't think she's that great. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I've been The Real Deal. Please leave me a cheeky thumbs up. Make sure you smash, smash, smash that subscribe. And I'll see you all in a video soon. Peace.